we're going to have a talk about a bit of a talk about performance. Um, and it's really, it's not a coincidence that Blue Runner in this picture has a uh, flank in his hand to be the crowd. Uh, because it kind of has, what I'm going to talk about is a bit important, right? And I want to talk about this. Every time I run that, and I try to scroll around and open a window, and it stutters and skips and drops frame, it kind of makes me cry. It makes your users cry. And even worse, it makes the iOS developers smug because they can write crappy code and have it compensated by better hardware. Right? Um, so, <laughs> this isn't really acceptable, right? So, the thing is, when you're, the Android is actually running its UI, it's your app. It's, do, it's doing its screen updates exactly every 16 milliseconds, 60 FPS. Pretty much all the devices right now have a 60 FPS screen. So that means that your app must be able to dispatch a new frame every 16 milliseconds. Uh, and if you skip it, it's going to drop frames, it's going to stutter, it's going to look horrible, you know. And the iOS developers are going to be smart. Uh, so the thing is, you have the main, you have the main thread, and the main thread actually does a drawing. So you need to keep your stuff on the main thread. And a common thing is, I have people come up to me when I, of course, whine about how their app is running badly, and they go, "Well, yeah, but I don't know why. Why is it running slowly?" And I'm like, "Did you check?" And then I'm like, yeah, well, I read the blog post from Jake Wharton, and I, you know, fixed that thing, and I read, uh, I've seen a few videos on YouTube from uh, Android developers, and they said I'm not supposed to use enums, so I fixed that, and my app is still, you know, it's still running slowly. And then I go, you know, I really start to like look at the nerd thing, and I go, but did you check? No. Like, what? What? Did you measure what exactly is slow? No. Yeah, and most of the answer is um, no. I, yeah. Well, <coughs> first thing, measure. If anything goes wrong, you measure. You don't guess. Um, it's an extremely important skill for a software developer in general. Don't guess. Check. Figure out what's wrong. Fix it. Right? And this talk is basically going to be about how you actually measure these things on Android. Um, so these are the tools you have. Uh, they're not the best in, in the market. Uh, they're not the least bug ones. They're usually pretty broken, but they still do the job. Um, the main thing you're going to be interested in is in the CPU profiles, where the, they're going to tell you what exactly is going on on your main thread. And this is where you are going to do most of your debug. Uh, the other thing is you're probably going to, at some point, figure out what's going on with your memory. Your app is going to crash without a memory exception. You're going to have users on slower, smaller devices screaming at you because they keep crashing because they're loading big images. This is where you're going to use these tools. You can also do GPU profiling. Uh, it can be useful at times, but mostly for game development. If you're an app developer, there's not all that much you can see, right? Um, so let's start. Have you seen this thing? before. It's big, it's usually in your way, and you always hide it. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, this is your application memory, this, this is your CPU, this is your GPU. This is how it looks like if you have an um, Android 7.0 device on it, right? So, the thing with this UI is, do you, do you see those tiny buttons? Those are important. Uh, Google being good at the, uh, user interface device uh, design as they are, the most important items are the smallest ones in our here. Um, so let's go piece by piece. Uh, so let's figure out why my app is stuttering. I'm going to start with the CPU profile. I'm going to press this small icon and I plug next to the CPU ground. And Android Studio is going to start collecting data what's going on in your app. And this is where you do, you take your phone in your hand, you do whatever's going wrong, what's stuttering, and then you press this button again. And you're going to get that data collected, and you're going to get this uh, it looks horrible. Uh, if you don't know what you're looking for, it probably looks confusing. But the thing is, you need to look at the main thread. And what you're actually looking for is this. This pattern, this means if you're going to click on this, it's going to be on draw. These are 
are the calls where Android is dispatching and actually rendering your views on the screen. And this pattern means it has this nice beat to it, which means it's actually doing it every 60 milliseconds. No friend problem. If you're going to see the timer up there, it's going to show you 60 milliseconds. <coughs> the problem is if you see something like this, you see this is like frame, 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 uh, frame. Uh, this is where all your user interface has just stopped. And uh, users going, nothing's wrong, right? This is what you want to fix. If you click on it, you're going to actually see the chain of manifold that led to that problem. You click on it, you see what's slow, you try to fix it or get off the main thread. Use a AC file, use RxJava if you're smart, or just get it off the main thread if possible, or do something else. Um, that's not my favorite tool because it doesn't really look all that good. Uh, it can sometimes be really hard to see what's going on there. So there's an older tool called the trace view, which is a bit more important. You're going to find it in this menu. It's under in the end device monitor. And as it goes with, with the, as I said, with the developer tools, there's again this tiny little button in the upper left corner of the screen you can press. It's funny arrow with the red dot. It's going to start the same method profiling process, uh, I think, for. Uh, you can also do it in code. Um, if you're trying to measure something, you don't have time to calculate by pressing buttons. This is how that view is going to look like. Why do I like it more? Is because you see all the threads at once. This is like our framework at PSPD Active. You have a main thread that's doing all the UI stuff. And there's like the background class, like, you know, the PDF rendering thread, the metadata thread, the, uh, some RX threads that are doing some things. But again, main thread is still the most important. And again, what you're looking for is this is the nice thing. You're looking for 60 millisecond screen update. Sometimes there's going to be a pause. For example, if nothing changes in your UI, and your physical is going to be better to all calls. But most important thing here is, in between these calls, it either has to be a really short, uh, really short spike of your method call, or it has to be a method name, uh, it's called native call once, which means that the main thread is basically sitting, doing nothing, waiting for an to wake it up. Um, but again, this is what you're looking for. This kind of cabbage is something you're not looking for and shouldn't exist, right? Uh, this means something really is going on on your main thread and it's probably suffering your app. So uh, if you want to look, look at it closely, if you actually hover your mouse over this graph, you're going to see the method call up here. Uh, if you can see what it says, it says bitmap factory native decode asset, blah, blah, blah. So what, what's happening here in my app is something is loading a really, really fast bitmap on the main thread, and Android can't really decode it fast enough for the frames not to draw. So either I need to get it off the main thread, or I need to basically resize it and make it smaller so it's going to be faster. One of these things. Uh, this is one of your like most important tools you can use to get your app running at least a bit smoother. Uh, of course, sometimes that's not enough. Sometimes you're going to see things in there and trace through that don't make sense, or you can't really track down why they're going to happen. Why they're happening. So then you have to take off the big guns. This this trace is the biggest, baddest tool you have when you're trying to figure out what's going on in your operating system. Uh, it basically profiles everything that's going on on the Android operating system. It's, of course, a small Python script you run. Uh, it collects data for 10 seconds, dies, and spews out an HTML. And then you open it, and then you see this. Uh, this is, of course, one of the 10 screens you can actually page down like 10 times. You're still going to collect more data. Um, what's going on here, you have everything from what's going on on your CPUs, what the uh, hardware layer is doing, what the animators are doing, what the surface slingers are doing. You can actually see exactly what Android is doing. Which is, of course, actually completely confusing. There's too much stuff, and it's pretty hard to understand. But again, UI thread is what you're interested in. And again, this is what we're looking for. 16 milliseconds on draw patterns. There may be something in between them, but they must not be delayed. This actually helps you 
and has these S here. Those aren't American grades. You're not getting them captured. Uh, but the green half means uh, frame update on time. That's fine. The orange half means frame update delay. Your frame has to miss the PC before, so that's not good. And then there can be a red half, which means I actually had to drop several frames to get up to see what you're doing. That's bad. That should not happen, right? Um, you can, of course, zoom in. And then you can see, actually, a bit more detail about the operating system. This is one of the examples. You see, it's, it's going on the main path. It has deliver input update up here. It's new frame. And there's this your view but draw, right? This is the one that has to happen every system. So here's the problem. This input took ages. When I profiled that, I found that in our code, we, we had on touch event code that actually calculated some matrices and took ages. So this is how you figure out what's going on there. Then again, you actually have like, when you initialize your app, you have this thing, basically, your, draw, your view is drawing for a long, long time. So there's something complex out there. Drawing a this resolution is building that open view illustrator for a long while. Do you have a lot of things? Do you have a lot of tabs? Do you have a lot of shapes? There's something wrong with drawing that view. Make it simple, make it go away, replace it with something fast. Um, again, this is how, for example, it looks like when you start an activity. Do frame, there's traversal, there's layout. Something happened, all your application is being laid out again. And this this layout takes ages. There's more. There's create view, in play. There's text view. There's image view. We call this bitmap again for this long while. This is basically the exact same thing I showed in the trace view of the content. So again, you see exactly what's going on. It can be a bit complex because it shows you even the layers inside the operating system what's going on. But if you really, need, if there's no other way to figure out what's going on in your app why it's slow, then you have this tool. Uh, you can, of course, this is a bit, this is even fun. You can actually say trace begin section and trace end section. And it's going to highlight, it's going to add a block in here with your name you put in here. So you can actually use it to basically do custom files. You throw it in and say, I don't know, now I'm starting to draw my hearts on my social media app and I'm ending drawing my heart. You can, you're going to see it here as a block, which is also kind of useful if you're really trying to figure out. Where, where things go wrong. Uh, the other thing, GPU profiling, that is just a bit less useful, except for this graph. You can find it in your uh, developer settings on an Android device from a same settings lollipop. Don't put a word on it. And the most important thing is, is this green line. This is 60 milliseconds time. If the, if the bar goes above this line, your frame is being processed for way too long. It's going over 60 milliseconds. On Android 7, it's actually going to render those bars a bit wider. And you, you're going to see the same graph on in Android Studio itself. And the parts that are important here is basically command issue. If this takes a long while, this means you're doing a lot of canvas calls when the view is drawn. It means you're doing like canvas draw line, canvas draw line, canvas buffer draw line or something, or it can be done by the code, underlying code, of course. So this takes a long while, we're going to see a command issue. Um, then, sync is basically moving all those commands back to the, uh, the render track, and there's a draw. And this, I mean, if this is slow, that's a problem. The problem is the draw is actually executed on the GPU, of course, because Android is not in the render uh, UI. So there's not much you can do here except basically, again, simplify the view. And on your Android, you're actually going to see the, me uh, the measure layout pass here. So if you have custom views, this is where they're going to show up if you're measuring a layout all the long. If you use relative layout with too complex, too much constraints, uh, if you use linear layout that has really deep levels, uh, weights, stuff like that, right? So this is where you're going to see the problem. Now that was GPU. Now let's move to the memory. Uh, the, the horrible times of having 32 megabytes of memory available are thankfully gone because that was painful. But you can still easily 
managed to kill off your uh, available application peak space by just, you know, loading too much bitmaps, or just tweaking your activities, which is surprisingly easy, especially if you're uh, up to the times, you're using Rx Java, a lot of anonymous functions, it's so easy to leave all your views in context everywhere. And then you have a problem. So, again, back to the view in Ender Studio. The, this tiny little button is going to basically dump all your current memory on uh, on the flash in the device and then it's going to load. It's going to run garbage collection first, uh, so you're essentially only going to see stuff that's still referenced that you're still keeping alive. And when this loads, you are again meet greeted with this super user-friendly uh, dialog. And the important parts of this is here, you're going to see every class, uh, all the objects sorted by class in your memory right now, by their size in bytes. And if you click on it, you're going to see all the instances of that object listed here. And if you click on any instance, you can actually inspect them. You, if you click this, it's the same as in Zebra, you're going to see their properties, what they are, et cetera, et cetera. But more, more interestingly, here in the reference tree, you're going to see why that instance is still around, why it hasn't been cleaned up. For example, I'm showing this byte, and it says this byte is actually belongs to an M buffer, and that M buffer belongs to a lower res bitmap, and that lower res bitmap belongs to a lower res subview, and that lower res subview is being referenced by six different bytes. So if you have memory leaks, here is where you see where those leaks are coming from, where those things are actually referenced. Uh, they tend to, it's going to probably be somewhere inside the OS, but it's pretty easy to figure out where they are. Uh, in your, in Studio 2 do, you're actually going to have, next to that view, this analyzer task to do, where you say, find me leaked activities and duplicate strings, which is kind of important, but the, the leaked activities are pretty important because when you have leaked activities, it looks like that. I managed to leak five activities. So I'm referencing a bunch of stuff five times. It's burning a bunch of memory. And again, if you click on them, on the previous view, on this view, you're going to have the object highlighted here, and you'll be able to figure out where all your activities are still left reference from, so you're going to notice where you forgot and kept it. Um, of course, if that doesn't work, Ah, oh come on. No, you need a faster laptop. No. <laughs> so, <laughs> then, then comes the time, if that doesn't work, then comes the time that you need to go and you fix this. It's going to be a dark day, but it's going to come sooner or later. Um, and this actual piece of software is called Eclipse Memory Analyzer. And it's a more powerful version of the thing I've just shown you in Android Studio. Because if that thing in Android Studio is buggy, broken, or doesn't show you enough information, which <coughs> happens because it's not done yet, then you use this. Um, you collect data, do the heat dump the same way uh, in Android Studio. You use this hprof column tool that's part that's in Android SDK tools to convert it to the desktop Java format, and then you load it. And this tool has so many options that it's kind of crazy. You can actually do SQL queries over your memory. So you can see, find me all the instances of this activity sorted by size, something. But the important part is you have something that's called dominated tree. It's a big link. You click on it, and it's going to show you, again, your biggest object in your memory. In my case, it's a content resolver data provider, which for some reason is 27 megabytes big, which is a lot for Android. You only have like 120 megs. So if you want to figure out what's going on with this, you click on it and say, I want path to GC roots. This is a complicated way of saying, tell me why this object is still in the memory. And it's really smart to like do leaks and stuff references because they don't really matter when it comes to memory. And you get a screen like this that again says, oh, my data provider is being held by the data provider, document source, 
that it's an object inside an array list, which is being called between assessment filters, which is being called document, which is being carried in dots, and then you can figure out why exactly is that thing still alive. And if you actually click on it here, it's also going to show you its properties so you can see why it's actually trying to sell many of the dots. So this is a pretty useful tool. Uh, it, I use it rarely, but when you must use it, um, so, in conclusion, uh, you've probably seen this fact, performance matters. Uh, we actually manage to measure uh, things, and it's really important for your application to run smoothly. Because a lot of applications get a noticeably bigger bounce rate on input rate. Even on web page, you're going to see a huge increase in bounce rate if your web page is slow, slower than 300 milliseconds. So, it's kind of important. Um, there's this bold guy. Uh, that, that's my brother at heart, called Paul McCallis, that had a bunch of videos that also explain things how to make your application better, how to manage things. And you're going to find a lot of these things in uh, this Google Plus community. It's called Android Performance, Android Performance Patterns, I think. And you can basically find a lot of posts and information about this as well over there. Uh, the other thing is this blog post, um, I think this is a good one. Uh, it describes things I just said in a lot more in detail because we don't have time and goes uh, in depth about what each of these things is. So run those tools at least once before your app release. I guarantee you you're going to find like 15 easy to fix problems that you're going to need to have run really, really well. Thank you. your opinion on enums in Java? In what? On enums in general. Uh, there's a good reason why Android team said not to use them. Uh, the problem is they're not, they're objects and resolving them is kind of expensive at times. So you're going to see them a lot, you're going to see them ignored a lot in own draw code and stuff like that. This, anything that's connected to layout, measure, and own draw is really going to punish you badly if you're going to allocate memory there. Allocation is expensive, and enums really, really love their memory allocations. They're going to keep getting allocated, created, destroyed, allocated, where. So, anytime near graphics code, on draw code, they're usually a bad idea. They also can't be inline, uh, even on newer Androids, so that's downside. But, really, you should use them.
them by default, because if you use like RESTful stuff, anything that's not really performance critical, anything that doesn't have to run in like five milliseconds, use the damn enum because it's going to be you know type safety is important, um, and that's it. Right. Okay. Thanks for listening to me. Um, I'm going to stop talking now and go have your beers.